seen a lot of musicals, haven't you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> The different colors of pleasing fungus beetles. Jesse said there was a green one. I laughed at him. I thought he was wrong. His sense of color is a little off sometimes, but uh, that one's pretty green. Pleasing fungus beetle culture. I've just added in these chunks of kinchi, new product that I've got up on the website, mushroom spawn, mycelia, threading through the oak substrate, a few other ingredients in there too. These beetles collected mm, over six months ago, doing really, really well. Wow, at magnification, you can see that those are actual divots there in the elytra or wing covers of the species. Love to see what they're doing. I think I need to keep the tank a bit more moist so we can start to see some reproduction in here and get these into captive breeding. Like it when we see them double stacked like that. Right there on the new Kinshi product. Hoping that they are feeding on it. Check that new product out on the website. I think I've got it at like $6 for a sandwich bag of it. Should be great for millipedes. Stag beetles, of course. Uh, isopods. Very excited to start using this in my various tanks. Hi, I'm Peter Clausen from Bugs in Cyberspace. I also run a business called Sky Island Adventures, nestled down here between the Sky Islands and a city called Sonoida here in southeastern Arizona. Come down and explore the world of bugs here in what I consider to be the best place in the United States for finding insects, the biggest, showiest, most impressive ones. Also run a business called Bugs in Cyberspace, where we sell pet bugs. I've had the website up for 25 years. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at pleasing fungus beetles, a kind of beetle in the family Erotility. They're gorgeous beetles. They were once classified in the genus Gibifer. They are now in Cypherotylus, and more specifically, they are Cypherotylus californicus. Come in a range of colors, everything from blues, different shades of blue, to different shades of purple. You'll see some sort of periwinkle transitional colors, and then maybe some greenish ones. <laughs> as far as beetles in the United States go, they're sort of ladybug-esque in that they're pretty dang cute. Uh, anybody that sees them in nature encounters them on the fungus here in monsoon seasons in Arizona in association with the oak trees is going to be very impressed by how colorful they are and also how active they are. And they can also be quite plentiful. It never really occurred to me that they could be decent pets because I had never seen them on anybody's list before and had never offered them or even really tried to keep them long-term myself through my various trips to Arizona in the past. But as it turns out, they do quite well. It's important that the adults are not kept too humid in the tank, it seems. But unfortunately, it seems that the larvae, the eggs and the larvae of the beetles do need some moisture in the tank. and so. It's a little tricky to get that just right. We have seen reproduction in our tanks through small larvae. And once we implemented a new kinshi product or a fungus based product that's grown on sawdust for mushroom farming, the beetles seem to do much better. But ordinarily and historically, we kept a single large chunk of wood, a piece of a fallen log in a rather dry bin and misted it maybe once or twice per week. And uh, surprisingly, most of the beetles did quite well. And again, I say surprising because 
I've never seen them on anybody's lists here in the hobby before. So with that, please enjoy the video. If you have any comments or questions, you're welcome to ask them. I look forward to seeing them become more popular in the hobby because they're very cute and very active, fun to watch, and just one of the coolest looking beetles in the hobby. Talking about a little habitat photo of what the fungus looks like growing on the bark that these beetles like to feed on. There are some larvae down here. Those spiky little guys, the tails. And when they hatch or emerge as adults, after pupating, they leave these little pupil skins behind. It's a delicacy, a delicacy for several of them. It is. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at this. Oh. Well, speak of the devil. That blue is so pretty. No joke. They're such good sized beetles, too. Another type of fungus feeding beetle. Small ones. Another type. And then up here on the mushroom itself, definite fungus beetle larva there. Two long tails, see who's hiding underneath here. Bunch more of them zipping around back there. Beetles, adult beetles. This one's hanging out down on the ground. Must have fallen off. But uh, lots and lots of really good sized. Must be getting ready to pupate very soon. Fungus beetle larvae all up and down this fallen log. A lot of sawdust down there too. I don't know if that's something they did. I was going to use this to pull myself up, but not like Aaron who uh, knocked the whole tree down a minute ago, just leaning up against it. <laughs> you can hear a beetle attracted to the light. You might guess these were bats. All hanging out here underneath this tree. You're going to want to see this. This is not the fungus beetle I'm talking about. I mean, it is the one I saw first. Look at the color on that. That is amazing. But, come back in here. Oh, cool. Look at these pleasing fungus beetles. Oh, neat. There are hundreds and hundreds of them all over this tree. 